Good morning, everybody. Orange A here with another AFK Journey video. And today we got our first communication from the devs about the future of this game since launch. And it actually is better than I anticipated. Like I've played a lot of games where the development team is just like silent behind the scenes the whole time. And then a patch rolls out and you're like, oh, well, well, look at this. This is kind of neat, but I really love it when game developers just kind of point you in the direction that they are thinking the game is going to go in, especially when they point you in the direction that the devs did today. They're addressing some things that I very much thought would get addressed, and then they announced the season stuff, which I have a lot to say about that. That's basically like the meat of this video is going to be talking about seasons, but I want to start with the social bit. So we're going to jump over to the news article right here for a second, um, and let's start with this cross-server social features. What this is, is the ability to add friends from different servers, which is important, like that we couldn't do that already, felt like not finished. But the fact that it's getting updated this quick means that they also felt like it should have been in the game since the beginning and they're quickly working to fix that. Great. Great, great, great. I, I'm happy to give that much. Uh, that's an awesome thing. And then participating in co-op battles across servers is important because especially if you're like pushing content or into kind of hard stuff, a lot of times it takes a little while to find co-op friends, to fight those like world monsters where you can't fight them by yourself. So I like all of this. This is all just a W. It's something the game probably should have had since launch, but I'm very willing to take it now. And then what they're not doing here with, the, with this uh, cross-server function is allowing for cross-server guilds. And there's literally no way they could do that. I've heard some people talking today and seen some comments about how they should do this thing. And I would actually argue that they ought not to. If you've been investing into your account, and I mean with time and money, and you've been competing, like your guild has been competing with other guilds on your server. And then all of a sudden, somebody from a whale guild on another server where there's another whale guild they're competing with creates one alt on your server and then has all 29 of their friends and their other guild just merge over into that one, all of the competing that you've been used to on your server is now like overtaken by a guild of mega whales just because they were sad that they were competing with mega whales on their other server and that will just create hard feelings in a bad time so i don't want that to happen and i'm actually happy they're not implementing that with this update and i think that's great mostly what i want to focus on here is seasons they just like casually drop in this first part that they're adding new seasons and then they like they're like wait new seasons that's right in the following parts of the article we'd like to walk you through what the new season means in afk journey what you could expect and how it maintains balance in the long term okay i have a real i've read this several times i have a really good idea of what they're going for here and i want to walk you through it so new season what to expect the team has learned from the experience of developing and running multiple live service titles let me stop you right there do you know what kills so many of these kind of games a having nothing to do having nothing to do i have played a ton of games that i really really liked i got to the end game i was a whale and i or even not even a whale maybe just a light spender i get to the end game in like two or three weeks and i'm like well waiting for the next event i guess and the more times the more opportunity i have to like step away from the game and play other games the less likely i am to come back so for the long-term health of this game it's important to give people something to do at the end game and that is everyone from free to play players which it will just naturally take them longer to experience the game we have right now all the way to mega whales who if we're being honest the game doesn't exist without mega whales thank you mega whales for supporting the game even if i wish there was some kind of like spending cap in gotcha games um hey i still appreciate people who throw money at the games that i play so i think it's important to provide opportunities for players of all spending levels to keep playing the game even if it's just for a little bit every day now let's dive into what this means a little bit more that's kind of like why i'm happy to see this already but let me talk about what they're actually doing so um, let's see. One challenge has been to create a design that remains rewarding for years to come. Good. They don't want this game to end this year. Neither do I. For players new and old, with the introduction of each new season, we wish to offer a slew of ever-expanding new content and game design that alleviates the pressure of progression. I have a lot to say on this here in a minute. That alleviates the pressure of progression. I see what they're trying to do, and I'm going to tie it all together. So, rich lore and ever-expanding tale. First of all, each new season is set to reveal a new region of Asperia. It will present 
fresh new storylines, expansive map explorations, and lavish rewards. Okay, the storyline stuff, I don't really care about. Like, personally, I'm not playing this game for the story. It's okay. I don't read everything or listen to everything. I skip a lot of stuff, but I do enjoy exploring maps and finding treasure chests and getting new rewards. This is important. Expanding the PVE world, there's a lot of good stuff to go claim in the world. So just keep keep making it bigger, keep, especially when you're bringing, talking about newer players coming to the game. Keep giving them that feeling of like, as I progress my account, I can keep finding more gems. I can keep finding more hero dust. I can keep finding more EXP and gold. That's wonderful. So keep expanding the map. Excellent. Today, we're excited to announce that the upcoming season will be called Song of Strife and is set to arrive in May 2024, the, which is next month. That is that's a quick turnaround, guys. It is like 20 days until May 2024. Not saying it'll drop on the first, but it could. The Song of Strife season will reveal an expansive new region, great, a new adventure of Magister Merlin and tribes who come together to face unforgetting trials. So more story. More details will be revealed as we get closer. We'll look we'll forward to that. And then please follow us and subscribe on social media to learn more. Okay, season progression. Let's dive in. An easy to manage new dynamic. Each new season will bring new progression lines that are unique for each season. Remember that we can understand the existing progression mechanisms as permanent progression. So systems like artifacts, resonance, levels, class equipment, hero tiers, hero exclusive equipment, etc., will remain effective across all seasons. What that means is, is we are right now in the preseason of AFK journey. Think about like a football team or a basketball team or something like that. What do you do in the preseason? You try to get yourself as like geared up, as ready to go as you can. So for now, everything we're doing, leveling our character's resonance, leveling our character's equipment, leveling our character's, you know, like special weapons, all of this is permanent for our account. But if you can, let's go back to the analogy of like a football team. A football team, you spend all this time like building up your players, getting your team ready to go, then a season starts. And yes, everything you did in the preseason applies to the regular season because you're using those players. But then as you play that season, you will earn rewards, you will get wins, you will get losses, you will compete for a championship. And then when that season is over, every you, you given the rewards that you earned, and you will then do it all again next season. You'll probably enter some kind of off season, which I bet you we have off seasons here. And then all of those things in this game, what they're going to do is add side stuff. Like right here, this character has a level, has equipment, or has you know character specific equipment and has this equipment. All of that stuff is going to count. But then they're going to add like seasonal based equipments, which you will probably get at like level one and have to level up by doing whatever the seasonal quests are. It'll be something that takes your account and powers it up, which is great for like newer players or returning players, because if they've fallen behind, at least in one part of the game, they will be able in theory to power it up along with the rest of us. Now, you are still rewarded for being somebody that plays every day or has a powerful account or who has spent money because all of your like preseason stuff in my analogy you have that too but I imagine the seasonal gear or seasonal equipment or seasonal you know whatever the seasonal like extra thing is is going to be very powerful and then very specifically useful to like fighting the bosses for that season or something like that like imagine for example like let me jump into a fight so I'll jump into like this AFK stage. Imagine if they added a seasonal artifact that was particularly good against bosses. Okay, everybody could get that artifact and everybody who's playing would have that buff against the boss. In theory, that would give everyone, and let's see if my team can clear uh, level 190 stuff with my level 150 units. Um, in theory, that would give everybody the potential of beating the boss. And immediately people are like, wait a second, that's not fair. Why should new players or people who haven't played forever be able to beat the same stuff I have? It doesn't matter. The rewards for clearing should be available to everyone. And I think the devs realize that. What you get by playing all the time or spending money is access 
to the leaderboards. And there needs to be separate reward systems for the leaderboard winners, for the people leading on the leaderboards, as there are separate from the clearing rewards. The clearing rewards need to be good, they need to be generous, but there needs to be big prizes for being in first place or being in the top 10. And oftentimes those big prizes can just look like titles. In this game, you get to run around with a title above your head and it feels cool. To have a title floating around above your head feels really neat. Hey, we beat that stage, let's go. Um, by the way, once you get to where you're facing this kind of stuff, background farming here, like, like hitting auto battle is a lot different. I need to do a whole guide on that. But um, so for example, if you look in like battle modes arena right now, I'm in champion, I'm in fifth place, right? So at the end of this week, I think I get some kind of special title for being as high as I will be in arena and I can rock that title running around the world and that'll feel good to me. Now, does everyone eventually have access to getting the rewards for tearing up to champion tier? Yep, those are sitting there waiting for anybody who wants to go get them to get them but I will also receive additional rewards for being ranked as high as I am. You pro provide rewards to everybody through like the season clearing rewards. You provide specific rewards to people who want to get sweaty with it. And I think that's a perfect way of approaching this system. So, okay, let's read on. It says, um, we understand that existing program mechanisms as permanent progression, we already know that. Then upon entering a season, Song of Strife, a new seasonal progression, which is all that stuff in theory I just talked about, will be introduced. This system will function in tandem with the existing permanent system. Season progression compromises or comprises a few new systems such as seasonal resonance level. So you'll be able to provide some like extra side levels to your team in the season, which will probably again, reset to zero at the end of every season, seasonal class equipment, seasonal artifacts, which I literally referenced, that's cool, and potential new seasonal items. Seasonal progression is tailored to emphasize the strategic fun of progressing through seasonal content. We are committed to providing fun new content with each new season, ensuring a dynamic and refreshing progression experience. So something to do for everybody. I love it. The design philosophy is built upon three key principles. Preserve the value of permanent progression systems. Keep your people who played from the beginning or played every day happy. Check. To create an easy to manage seasonal progression system. Yeah, don't make it convoluted. Games that do that, it's terrible. And to lower the entry barrier for returning or new players. They, this looks like, wait, this is a typo? To lower the entry barrier for returning newcomers. You're not a returning newcomer. There's no such thing. You could be a returning player or a newcomer and they probably meant to like, and that. Anyway, all times are, a poor, are a opportune for AFK Journey. So good, just give people coming back into the game something to do to immediately feel like they can play at a high level again and uh, give new players an option. I love that. Okay, new seasons will also bring refreshing changes to gameplay, presenting new mechanics and challenges. For instance, the new season Song of Strife is set to introduce new gameplay mechanisms. So this could be something like maybe all this weird map stuff we've been doing with like doors and flamethrowers and stuff like that is kind of something that they're going to work in here, which would be another example of something that's like good for all players. Like it's they're, they're kind of fun maps to do every once in a while. And whether you're a new player or a veteran, you know, using the flamethrower to kill mobs is something we all can do. As well as new content for Dream Realm, uh, good. Dream Realm on just a four thing rotation, it probably needs a little extra. Battle Drills and Primal Lord all good pve stuff there will also be visual upgrades to present the new features across multiple game modes to build a better seasonal experience experience we're exploring the integration of game modes and activities throughout the season whether it's individual strategies or team challenges with friends that's interesting i actually like guild-based challenges but friend-based challenges is kind of weird we will all discover more fun for years to come goal uh let's see here after the launch of new season, Song of Strife, different servers may initiate at varying times. This is interesting to me, um, but will adhere to a unified global end time. Okay, so if basically, I think I feel like what this is saying is like, maybe you start a new account and you're starting on like a new server. Um, your new server is still going to have the same end date for the season as everyone else. I think they just have to do that eventually transitioning together to the next succeeding, succeeding season. So yeah, if your server ended 
early, but because at the same time, just fewer days, you will still start the next season at the same time. And then they say how they're just going to plan to do a really good job. Like they're going to do their homework and try to plan it out. And um, as for those players who possess the drive to achieve higher, the leaderboards of each season will provide a great opportunity to showcase your valor, strength and relentless spirit. And this is massively important for most players. The clear rewards and the idea of like just doing as good as you can will be enough. But there are the sweaty players and you must also provide them something to do because even the non-sweaty players need the idea that like someday they could get sweaty if they wanted to and that there would be something at the end of that tunnel for them. That's really important. Incentive is important. And then what if I missed out? This is cool. So Temporal Nexus is going to function like a thing I've seen in a lot of other games where an event or some kind of temporary thing goes live and then it ends. And then sometime after it ends, there's this like archive area where you can go back and replay it. Honkai Star Rail has this. War of the Visions has this. Most games I've ever played have this. So they're, they're just also going to have that as well. And then they just basically say, thank you for playing the game. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for making a great game, devs. Like this game has been really, really fun so far. And I'm excited to see that we're already getting our first big update. The hot fix that is fixing a lot of the um, issues and adding that cross server stuff, I believe goes live tomorrow. And then the patch that does all of that seasonal stuff will be next month. So something to look forward to. Any more news on that, I'll definitely cover it here on the channel. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Peace.